and uh, it's, it's, it's been it's been really beautiful to see you guys <laughs> worshiping and, and to feel the presence of, of the Lord here. Uh, it's been amazing. I, I gotta tell you, uh, when we were worshiping, I was like, oh my God! Um, so uh, are, are we have. We, we really have to like step it up. <laughs> uh, but then the Lord reminded me, it's like, hey, remember, it's all about me. He's the one who gives us the ability and the strength and the courage to go out and, and do His will. Um, and uh, Sometimes we tend to limit ourselves because we believe like, oh, we're not worthy or, or you know, not me, Lord. And we see that in the Bible so many times. Yeah. Moses, uh, you know, um, um, and really, in, in my case, the Lord has to remind me every time. It's like, it's me. Just, you know, there's just vessel. Let, let me let me do it. Uh, work, work on, on my strength, not on my personal strength, but on the Lord's strength. And um, I, I saw a post the other day. It was kind of funny. It was an Instagram, and dude, there was like this really fit guy, like running down the aisle, like down the street, like really running and you know working it out. It's just like uh, uh, me trying to to work out my salvation. And then there was this other like chubby guy like in a motorcycle going by like me also being reminded it's Jesus already did it. Oh and he's like right in the side of this other guy and he's like So sometimes we, we have to remember, remember that. Um, it's not about us, it's about him what he already did for us. And um, let him do his thing. Yes. And, and, uh, yeah, I, I, he reminds me that every time. <laughs> uh, so I was asking the Lord, what should I talk about? What should I talk about? And, and honestly, um, we've, we've been doing uh, some Bible studies on, on Wednesday nights, uh, 7.30 in, in Playa Aviones, the Piñones, the Blitos house. Um, and uh, we were we started this year uh, doing a Bible study uh, verse by verse, going through the Bible. Sometimes uh, people who, who study the Bible thematically or, or, or look for a subject and study that subject, etc. But we decided to do it verse by verse. So let the Bible speak to us and we'll learn from it and and, um, and and literally learn from the Bible, not try to get a subject and, and you know, try to find Bible verses that back, up, mm -hmm. back it up instead of let's just study the Bible and see what God is saying right there. And it's, it's been amazing. Uh, we've only done it for two days. <laughs> but um, a, I, I also uh, follow uh, a pastor from Athi uh, Creek, uh, Oregon. It's uh, Brett Miller. And he studies the Bible that, that same way. That's where I got the idea from. And um, so we were studying the genealogy in Matthew. Uh, well, we decided to, to start in, 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 in Matthew with the New Testament. Thinking that really the New Testament um, is the Old Testament review. And so we're going to have to go back and forth and back and forth because it's all related. It's, it's all related. And um, since uh, we're going to do this Bible verse by verse, and, and the end is near, we said, like, okay, let's start from the New Testament. If Jesus has to be arrived yet, we'll, we'll get it. Uh, so, uh, uh, but, but we also felt that it's really important to, to, to get to know who Jesus is, who the Jesus of the Bible really is. Because I don't know you guys, but but um, at this age, there's like so many versions of Jesus That's right. that people are confused. There's there's a, an AI Jesus. Have you heard about that? An AI Jesus. And um, basically, 
well, from what I've seen, it's like AI intelligence has made up a Jesus, and then people will, you know, you can make him as you want. You know, you can you can uh, personalize him and ask him questions, and um, ask him questions about like faith. Uh, you know, uh, which is it real faith, and and. In, in a nutshell, he responded like, well, there are many faiths, and you have to find your own path. It's like, really? I mean, that's the spirit of Antichrist right there. That's why they call it artificial. Yeah. yeah. Artificial. But then people are like, giving like their reviews, like, yeah, but that's the Antichrist spirit right there. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, and, and reviews from people like, oh, finally, a Jesus that I can, I can relate to. Like, and then I remember the, the Bible saying that in, in the end times, people will uh, build up uh, teachers for themselves that will, you know, tickle their ear and tell them what they want to hear. It's like, wow, man. You can see it right now. It's like, this is amazing. I mean, we really live in really interesting times. Sad in, in some part, but at the same time, uh, like, like the Bible says, um, we need to, to, to um, uh, um, motivate each other and, and give us hope each other uh, through the Bible. And, and, and especially in these days that are bad, um, it's a... Uh, uh, Palabras me fueron, pero um, so here I'm going to Spanish. <laughs> uh, uh, eh, comfort each other. There, that's, that's the word. Comfort each other. Um, and uh, so we we decided to okay, let's start with uh, the New Testament and um, let's start you know going through the Bible to learn who Jesus really is and refresh our memory. And um, sometimes people say like. Oh, Jesus wouldn't say nothing like that. Jesus wouldn't offend anyone. It's like, really? Have you read him say to the, to the uh, Pharisees, like, oh, you're children of the devil, <laughs> serpents, you know, um, wash the tombs. It's like, really? Well, Jesus wouldn't offend anyone. No, 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 no. no call sin for what it is, and who set this record straight. I mean, it's not here to, you know, make everybody happy and you know, right. they love you through hell. No. I mean, if, if he has to say something harsh, you will. In a loving manner, because I I cannot imagine him, you know, even scolding the Pharisees like with hate, but maybe with authority, but, you know. Um, and, and he has all the right to and uh, he's loving, always loving. So we remember, we need to be reminded that that even when he confronts us, he does it with love for our best interest. Because in the end, it's our salvation. But what really is important. Right? Uh, this is this is uh, impassive. So we need to be reminded of that. So um, I don't know you guys, but. Um, Every time I read the Bible and I go through the genealogies, I, I'll go like, uh, and Adam had a blah, 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 blah. What is this new for you? Know? And you, sometimes you skip over it and you're like, hmm, what's the point? You know, I, I know Jesus is uh, from the lineage of David and Abraham and back to Adam, he's God's son. And yeah, you know, all these weird names here. But then when we start, really examining that, oh, there's some chance there. Because everything that God writes down, I mean, he's, he's not, um, how do you say? He, he, he doesn't waste time, he doesn't waste words. Everything is there for a purpose. And when we go into it, and I, I don't know if you have, I, I don't know if I'm repeating something that you guys have already studied, but but um, but if you haven't, let's go into it. It's, uh, Matthew 1 1. And I'm gonna. I like using the New Living Translation. Don't stop me to that, please. Okay. But um, uh, in Spanish, it's uh, 
la costumbre en Spanish es uh, we, I grew up uh, reading uh, uh, Reina Valera. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you guys, I read it and I was like, free talk. <laughs> what is this? And usually uh, the translation kind of like gives me a little bit more like content. And I'll cross reference just to see that there's not a thing to do here. But in this in this uh, sense, it kind of like makes a little bit more sense. So the ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah. Um, as you all know, uh, Matthew uh, is the, the author of, of this um, uh, book, Gospel. Yeah. Um, and he was a tax collector, publican, uh, uh, publican. He's not a Democrat. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, from, from little, I would always said Republican, Republican. And it's like, oh, really? there were Republicans back then? Yeah, well, kind of. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but um, so he was a tax collector. Um, he was hated by Jews and despised by Romans. So he was like right and smacked in the middle. He wasn't liked by anyone. Um, and in this case, especially, uh, we, can, we can see that um, the tax collectors, they used to collect the taxes, but they used to like, you know, charge a little bit more for their services, uh -huh. for their house, or you know, their, their, their clothes. Yeah. <laughs> so like, like, yeah, like in Puerto Rico, they you know, uh -huh. taxes for them. You charge a little bit extra, and so people hated him. And um, mostly, the Jews tend to see them as traitors because they were oppressing their own people. So, and they were collecting taxes for the Roman Empire. Okay, so that's the context. And um, Matthew, we see it later on, on, on other of the of the evangelists, uh, uh, gospels, uh, that Jesus calls him from uh, being a, a tax collector, and he leaves that behind, that old life behind, and then he becomes one of the disciples, one of the apostles, and the author of this book. And um, it's understood that. Matthew is writing uh, this gospel directed to the Jews and showing uh, Jesus as the Messiah, as the promised king. And um, in that sense, uh, we can see that right from the beginning, he doesn't waste time. He says, this is a record of the ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah. A Messiah is another word, word in Hebrew for king or anointed. So, for example, uh, you would call David, David the Messiah, or Solomon the Messiah, the king. So it, it, it was a, a common word in, in, in the Jewish uh, language and the Jewish culture. But Jewish culture also knew, and they also had the expectation that there was going to be a Messiah, a king, king of kings, that's going to be their savior. And there was like different ideas of how was that Messiah going to come. Was he going to come as a suffering messiah? Was he going to come like a conqueror like David? Um, actually, I, I just studied, but it would be too long to go that rabbit hole. But there was like um, basically like four different ideas for messiah: uh, messiah, son of Joseph, just like Joseph, um, that would uh, be who died for his uh, for, for his people, but then he will be placed in a place of honor and he will save his people. We can remember the, the story of Joseph. Uh, he came, he was sent by his father to his brothers to see how they were doing back in the field. Their brothers despised him, so they wanted to kill him. They said like, oh, here comes the beloved son, let's kill him. And then uh, Judah and Reuben, I believe, they said like, no, 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 come on, let's not do this. Let's better throw him in the, in the, yeah, also. <laughs> and, um, and then later uh, Judah saved him his life and said, like, oh no, let's sell him uh, as, as a slave. And then he went to Egypt. So basically this is the idea. The son is sent to his brothers, is despised, rejected, killed because 
for the father, they reported to the father that he was dead, they showed him uh, the bloody uh, turning and everything. So if the father and the family mourned him as dead, and for them, he was basically dead. Uh, he eventually uh, went to jail, uh, was accused without any wrongdoing. He was innocent, accused, uh, placed in, in, in a cell, and from there, God redeemed him and placed him second in, in command. Okay, and then from then, God used him to. Okay. Is everything okay? Okay. okay. Ah, thank you. Um, so from there, God used him to save his people, Israelites. So uh, that's that's a type of Jesus. If we can see it right there, and he came, he was despised, he was killed, resurrected for 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 his family and his brothers. He was basically raised back from from the dead. Because for a, for them, he was as good as dead. And then he was uh, in a in a uh, king king position, like the king, like the, the second in command, basically. Uh, and from there, he saved his people from, from starting to them. And, and, and it was a blessing for his people. So that was one of the ideas. Uh, there was another idea that um, they, they were expecting a Messiah like um, uh, Joshua, who would be a conqueror. And they were also expecting a, a Messiah like uh, Solomon and then a Messiah like David. So there was like this, all of these ideas and, and the people were expecting something big. Obviously, like, if you were to ask us right now, I mean, uh, back in that time, you Jewish people uh, being oppressed by Roman people, and um, what kind of Messiah would you like? A conqueror that will set you free, or someone that will die for you? What? What is this? A suffering Messiah? So most people, you know, they, they, they prefer the uh, so, here we go into the, the ancestors. And he goes right straight to it. He says, this is a record of the ancestors of Jesus the Messiah, a descendant of David and Abraham. So he set the record straight, right from there. He's a descendant of David and, um, and from, the, from Abraham also. So, he's a Jew. We, we need to, you know, I know you guys know this, but but um, there's like uh, some kind of like mixed sense out there that that, that Jesus is a Palestinian or, something like that, or, or Jesus is a Californian surfer. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. First walk of one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> First surfer. Yeah. And recorded. Um, but but you know he's a, he's a Jew. He's an Israelite. And, and that, that's where he, he comes from, that, that's his brothers. And so the lineage goes like this. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Sarah, whose mother was Tamar. Ooh. Ooh. So that, that, that we got like one strike right there. Ooh. What's that? Okay. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab. Aminadab was the father of Nason. Nason was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rea. Two, strike two. <laughs> Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Strike three. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother was Strike Four. Strike Four. It's like, oh, are you, are you sure we want to have this report on our ancestry? It's like, have you done that ancestry.com or something? I haven't. I don't recommend you do it. You may find things like this. <laughs> you know. Uh, there was a joke, it was like uh, this really um, famous family, I think it was in New York or something like that, they had like a really nice uh, lineage and ancestors, and then uh, they were going to do a, re a report on them, like, you know, this family comes like from Kings or something like that, and they, they traveled to the U.S., 
and then they send someone to, to make like a investigation, just you know, to check things out that everything cleared up. And the reporter came back and he said, like, oh no, yeah, everything is fine, but did you know that you had like a grand grandfather and he was electrocuted? He was a criminal. He went through the that phone, he was electrocuted. And it's like, oh no, we didn't know that, we didn't know that. Nah, don't worry, I'll fix it. The reporter came back and said, it's like, oh, and he had he he um, he had a, a important sitting position in applied electronics, <laughs> and he went out with a bag <laughs> with a truck. Uh, so yeah, so uh, you know, but you see right from here, Jesus, his lineage, it's it's it's, it's really like. Kind of like you mess up, right? His, his ancestors, they, they already have problems. And God could have ordained everything for him to come from a perfect ancestor and, and lineage, you know, everybody's saints and uh, heroes and everything like that. But we see here that it's recorded that there's pretty questionable characters here. And what does that tell us? Jesus redeems us. It redeems our past. And um, Jesus is one of us in a sense that that he was made fully man, fully God, and he's capable of redeeming us because he takes what is imperfect and he makes it perfect. So that that's that's the purpose. And he's telling us right here, right now, we're not perfect, you guys imperfect. And even the only man that's, that's perfect here, he comes from an imperfect family. So our past, when it comes to Jesus, he'll change it. He'll change that shame, those mistakes, those sins, those things that maybe maybe we didn't have anything to do about it because he, you know, although he's God, uh, as a human, you know, well, he has no, no blame from where he comes from, right? We, we were raised here, we were born here, we, we cannot do anything about our grandparents, what they did, what their mistake they did. But when Jesus comes into our lives, all of that changes. Okay. So that's, that's what is really beautiful here. And um, we we'll keep seeing and discovering something. So Solomon was the father of Rebo, we born. Rehoboam was the father of Abihab. Abihab was the father of Asa. Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the father of Jehoram. Jehoram was the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotam. Jotam was the father of Ahab. Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Manasseh was the father of Amon. Amon was the father of Josiah. And Josiah was the father of Okay. Ah. Yeah, you Or you him. Yeah. Uh, and his brothers, born at the time of the exile to Babylon. After Babylon exile, Jehoiah. Jehoiah. Yeah. Jehoiah was the father of. Oh, that's what's really worse. <laughs> Shaltiel. Uh, yeah, and he was the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the father of Abiu. Abiu was the father of Eliakim. Eliakim was the father of Azor. Azor was the father of Zadok. And Zadok was the father of Akim. Akim was the father of Eliud. Eliud was the father of Eleazar. Eleazar was the father of Methan. Methan was the father of Jacob. And Jacob was the father of Je Joseph, the husband of Mary. And Mary gave birth to Jesus, who is called the Messiah. So, <clears throat> going back to that name, the problematic one. <laughs> yeah, the. Uh, Jeconiah, yeah. Jeconiah, I don't know if you guys remember who Jeconiah was. But he was a wicked, wicked uh, king. And, and, and so were the ones before and after. But there's something really interesting about him. If we see, let's go to uh, 
Jeremiah 22, 24 and 30. There's a blood curse on Jeconiah, or Jeconiah King. Uh, I think there's another name, Jeconiah, yeah. It's a, it's a variant. And if we go to Jeremiah 22, Jeremiah 22, 24 and 30. Say amen when you, you're there. Amen. All right. It says, As surely as I live, says the Lord, I will abandon you, Jeconiah, or Coniah in, in some versions. I'm, I'm going to go with Coniah. That's easier for me to say. But it's, it's another variant of his name. Son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, even if you were the signet ring of my right hand, I would pull you off. I would hand you over to those who seek to kill you, those you so desperately fear, to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon and the mighty Babylonian army. I will expel you and your mother from this land, and you will die in a foreign country, not in your native, native land. You will never again return to your to the land you yearned for. Why is this man, Coniah, like a discarded broken jar? Why are he and his children to be exiled to a foreign land? O oh, earth, 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 listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Let the record show that this man, Coniah, was childless. He is a failure for none of his children would succeed him on the throne of David to rule over Judah. So God right there is getting him a, a death sentence and saying like, you're done and your, your, your descendants are done. You, no one in your bloodline is gonna rule over Judah. Did you get that? But then what happened? We have him on Jesus' answer. So, it's there. We can see this as part of even God's uh, uh, um, grace. Even, even in that sense, He is grateful. And He included Him there. Now, some might say, like, okay, wait, wait a minute. So there's a blood curse there, and God already said. No one from your descendants are going to rule over Judah, but then Jesus is the Messiah, is the King. What's going on here? How, how can this be fixed? Uh, does anyone have an idea? Who's, who's Jesus calling? Uh, God. So he really doesn't have a Koranian's God, right? So he does have the right through the unique lineage as a son of David, but that's why he needed to be born of a virgin, because God already knows. God, God knows the beginning from the end, and he had to be clean from any uh, sin that, that pours down or comes down from Adam and from this guy also. Uh, so in that sense, even if people who say like, oh, and, and then some Jews who argue like, oh, you see, that's why you're gonna be the Messiah, la, 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 la. But the answer is right there, it's, it's right in their noses. He aims Joseph, real son. He's the son of God. If it was a miraculous birth from Virgin Mary. And uh, so even in that, you see God's hand working all working out all of those details. And um, and you can also see a second chance that even if God discarded him, even if, if God did that, in the end, he reminded him and included him in the list. Just, you know, he works around it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, the curse is still there, but this is why Jesus is so special, because he's truly the son of God. And you can look it up later and look free. There's another lineage there. 
uh, is from Mary, Mary's uh, blog line, and it's Luke 2, uh, verses 34 on going. And you can see there, sometimes people say, ah, you see, the Bible contradicts itself. Those are other ancestors. Yes, of course, it's from Mary, there's their continent from Mary's point of uh, uh, lineage. But it, it goes all the way back to David through Nathan, no, not through Solomon. And, and, and you can see some of the characters there in the same, but Yoganai is not there. And if you study it even further, you can see that there's some ancestors there that are from the northern kingdom, which tends to imply that if they're from the northern kingdom, they might be descendants from Joseph also. And how can you have DNA from Joseph, from Levites? Because you remember, uh, Mary was a uh, 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 blood relative from Elizabeth, and they were from the Levite also. Okay. Right, so, uh, so in that sense, Jesus has the DNA from Joseph, from the Levites, and from David, and and it, it all comes down and it, it's perfectly matched in Mary, and Jesus does have Mary's uh, DNA and blood and God's uh, DNA, miraculous DNA. Right, and um, so in that sense, when when we see both um, lineage, we can see how how Jesus is just God made it so perfect, just to, to do all that, combine that in one man, one truly true man, who was perfect man, perfect perfect man, and, and complete God in one. And also, that, that speaks to us in the sense that, going back to, to our four or five strikes up to now, even our mistakes, God knows exactly what we're going to do. I mean, nothing that we do or we can do or not do, all, all our sins have already been paid at the cross. All of it. Even the ones that we haven't figured out how to do next, and we will. It's all already been paid. Jesus does not need to go back and do that cross tomorrow and die again for the sins we're going to do tomorrow. That does not give us a free card uh, you know, to sin and go out and live the wild, crazy life. And if we do, well, then we need to double check ourselves. Because uh, once we come to Christ, once we're truly saved, our, our, our nature changes. And we want to please God. We, we don't want to please the, the, the flesh. Of course, there's a battle. We're not perfect. We're going to sleep. We're going to fall. But then we have that assurance right there that Jesus made it all. He covered it all. All is, is done. When Jesus said in the cross, it's finished. It's really finished. It's done. Finished. And we can really um, anchor our faith in that. And, and that's that's our, 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 our stronghold right there. And re refuge right there. That is all done. And if. Let's, let's just. Let's go back to. Tamar for a second, because that's a really interesting story. It's Genesis 38. And it shows us that there's there's a thread in the Bible that I, I don't know if you've seen it before, but there's 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 a, a, a theme about the second son and the um primogenitor in English. The first one and the first one, as I understand it, I, I might be mistaken, but as I have learned to understand it, the firstborn is not necessarily physically the first one that is born, but it's a title. It's a title that you you have a right and a, and a blessing. For example, Jacob was not the first born, but uh, he got Esau to sell him his birthright. Yeah. And, um, and also with the blessing, you know. And um, 
So, so you can see right there, it's, it's not necessarily about who physically was born first, but it's, it's right and it's a blessing. And in Tamar's his, uh, story, you can, you can see that, that's Genesis 38. We all know, if not in a nutshell, because we're going to get hungry, but um, Tamar was the daughter-in-law of Judah. Uh, he, she married his uh, firstborn. He was a wicked man, God offed him up. Then uh, Judah said to the second son, um, you know, the law states that you have to marry your, your, your sister-in-law and uh, give him a, a son that's going to go to your brother. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I imagine, you know, the second brothers needed to, you know, help them the, the older brother to get a good wife, just in case. <laughs> oh, don't marry that one. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Uh, so, this second son comes and he says, like, ah, I'm not going to give my dead brother a, a, a chair. No, I'm not going to do that. So he did some crazy stuff and got thrown about that and said, like, you know what? You're gone. But why? Because God already knew that Tamar was going to be in Jesus' ancestry. So he was like, no, 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 she has to bear a son. She has to bear a son. And then Judah had another, a third uh, son who was younger, and you know, when he eventually grew up, he had to marry who would by then be like a really old woman. You know, and he said, again, yeah, you know what, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> but God, in his mercy, didn't pop his third son. But then Tamar, um, she did something kind of crazy, you know. She, she already knew, she's like, ah, it's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna be child, childless. So she um, dressed up like a, like a prostitute and, um, you know, she sold herself to Judah. Um, Judah, well, uh, you know, those times. He, he went in, he had sex with her. Um, they, they, they negotiated a price, it was a goat. I guess that was the rate at that time. Oh, uh, so, a goat, you know, and, uh, but he didn't have the goat there, so Tamar said, like, oh, no, what are you going to give me, you know, uh, uh, to secure the transaction? And, and he said, whatever you ask, oh, give me your ring, your staff, and uh, another thing. Uh, so he did. Uh, the next day, you know, he, he remembered, and he was going to be a decent uh, client, and, you know, so he sent his servant with the goat to go and look for the for the prostitute of the temple. <laughs> and when he got, he had to stay with the goat, it's like, oh, there's no one here, so just come back with the, with the message and say, oh, oh, okay, oh, oh, keep the goat, thank you. And um, so uh, th that one stand, that one night stand, or midday, or whatever stand, um, uh, in that moment, Tamar was pregnant with Judah's son. And um, so the promise was, was fulfilled. Uh, and uh, eventually, you know, um, it, it, come up, it, it, it all came to light. Judah recognized you know, what he had done and, and uh, he recognized the son. He uh, never had any more sex with her. Uh, so, and spared her life because they wanted to burn her uh, for, for prostitution. Uh, but he, he recognized, like, oh, no, she's been even more, more, more just than I, because he really had fault her. You know, he, he didn't keep his word uh, uh, that he said he was going to send the, the youngest son. Now, when the time came for Tamar to give birth, it was discovered that she was carrying twins. While she was in labor, one of the babies reached out his hand. That's kind of weird. And I, I was in my baby's birth, and if I saw that, I would be okay. You know, he reached out his hand, and um, the midwife grabbed it and tied a scarlet string around the child's wrist, announcing this one came out first. But then he pulled back his hand. You know, and it's like, whoa, where do you go? And out came his brother. Okay. 
So he was named Pérez, which means breaking up. And so technically, that was his second son, but he came out to him. The other one reached out first, he's like, ah, we have the first board, wow, come back out. So it's kind of a weird scene right there, good for a movie. Uh, then the baby with the scarlet string on his wrist was born, and he was named Sera, which means uh, scarlet or breakfast. So technically, Sera would have been the first born, because he, he came out first, but the blessing was given to Perez, who is named as one of the ancestors in Jesus' uh, lineage. The same comes, uh, the same thing happens with uh, Cain and Abel. Cain was the first one, but Abel was, was the one that, that God accepted this, this offering. He was the one that, that, that God really admired, but then Cain killed him. And then his blood cries out for justice. And then Cain was the one that was um, banned and cursed. We see that also with Jacob. Uh, he was the second son, but he got the, the, the blessing and, and he became Israel and the nation. Uh, we see that also here. We see that also uh, with Jesus. Jesus is, is also known as the second what? Adam, Adam, right? The first one blew it. But now Jesus is the second one, that he is coming to redeem the entire world. So we can see a thread in the Bible as to the second world, the second, second chances. And Jesus came the first one, the first time. He was rejected by his people, but he's going to return. He's going to come a second time as a conquering king. Amen. And the Bible yes. says that then the ones that pierced him will see him and mourn, and they God will take the veil out of their eyes and then they will recognize him as their king, as their messiah, and they will be saved. Yes. So you can see, and you can study it in the Bible, how many times there's like a second chance and God keeps giving us second chances and uh, sometimes more than second chance. Uh, in my life, God gave me a second chance for many chances, but for mainly a second chance. And, and that's why I'm here. That's why I am here. Um, oh, yeah. And so, what, what, what does this all have to do with us right now? I can see it right there, very simple. No matter where you come from, no matter what you've done, no matter what your family has done, no, no matter as you are right now, God loves you. And God directed Every little detail, just to just to have Jesus be born, right at the exact time from the from the people that he chose, <laughs> because he chose he wasn't by accident. It's not like us; we didn't choose for be born, but he did. And and if we can study that even further, the times it's it's all um, a prophecy from Daniel. And he gave the times when Jesus was going to be entering into Jerusalem. And, and, and that's why there were people there with their palms waiting for him. Have you ever wondered why were they there, there that day, that precise day, waiting for him, saying, Hosanna? Because some people knew, they started the Bible, and they knew, they were, they were you know, keeping the calendar, saying, like, the king is going to come. Messiah is going to come. Messiah is going to be here. And they recognize him. So, no matter where you come from, what you've done, or, or, or how you feel right now, if you feel like you're not, you're not worthy, well, really, you're not. But it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And he loves us just as we are. So, in that sense, we really need to, to recognize who Jesus is in our lives. Who are we? And um, I, I heard this uh, recently, and, and I said, like, oh man, that, that's, that's the ghost. Sometimes we do not fulfill our, 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 all, all that God has for us in our lives. Not because he's not good to keep his promise, but because we're not good enough to trust him or to believe it. 
we, we don't get to see who we are in his eyes. We keep looking at ourselves in our mirror from our family, from our past, from from our injuries or things that we haven't healed still, we haven't forget, forgotten or forgiven ourselves. We still keep ourselves uh, down. And unless we really understand who we are in God and how he sees us, and we free ourselves from our past, and, and we break that shell, we, we, we break that, and, and we really accept his full forgiveness. And we start looking at ourselves like he looks at us, and, and, and start trusting what he says about us, we're never going to reach our 100% uh, uh, potential. But if we do, if we did, oh God, <laughs> oh my God. If we really break through and, 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 and get free from those shackles, and that has to be every day, every day, every minute, every second, every time one of those, you know, darts from the devil comes to your mind, like, oh, you're, you're this or that, or really, you? You know, that's, yeah, me, not because I say so, because Jesus says so. And we need to, like, start practicing that, really, practicing that. And, and when we do, Oh my God, we're going to see God really manifest in our lives and use us. As the pastor said, like a piano. Imagine if the piano doesn't want to work. And no matter how you how you press it, it's going to go, 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 go. But if, if, it, if it works, then it, it, you know, it cannot do nothing. It's a, it's a thing. But just imagine if it was alive and, and it just didn't want, you know, oh, I don't want to play. I don't feel like it today. Not, not me. Just another one. But it's never going to work. But if it just allows itself to go through the current growth, we go through it, and the keys to play and everything, I mean, God already built us perfect in His eyes. He, he said specific um, characteristics, uh, gifts, and, and, and He molds us and He prepares us just to be right in the place that we are right now. Just let us be used by God to the fullest of what He wants to do in our lives. And um, in that sense, we can see here that that God made all these decisions and, 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 and He forgave many sins all through this Pachiva, you know, the and Rahab. The one played like a prostitute, the other one was a prostitute. <laughs> uh, but, but God forgave that and gave second chances, so, so we need to do that for ourselves. But in the end, God gave Mary and Joseph the privilege to raise up Jesus, to raise up the, 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 the Son of God, the Messiah. I mean, I have a little one, and, and I said, like, oh, thank God he's not Jesus, <laughs> you know, he's not the King of Kings. Uh, but, but it's such a responsibility. And he gave that to Joseph and Mary. And I, I don't think that Jesus came out with a, with a, with a guide or a book. This is how you're going to raise me up. But, you know, uh, you can scold me once, not twice. You know. and it must have been hard. Like, really? Who's, who's going to scold me? No, you do. No. <laughs> Remember what happened at, at the tabernacle? <laughs> you know. So, uh, but um, they had to. It's a kid. It's a baby. In his raising up, in his values, in he needed all of that. So God gave that to them. But he didn't give one thing to them. He didn't give them the right to name him. God named him. God said, no, no. It's going to be your kid, but he's going to be named Jesus. God saved him. So he named it. Imagine if Mary and Joseph were how are we going to name him? Bob. Whoa. Bob. <laughs> so I don't know. You know, you, I don't know. Probably that would have been messed up. <laughs> but God said, you know what? You're going to do all this, but I'm going to name him. Because he has a purpose. And he has named us. And, and you know what? One of the most beautiful things about Apocalypse is uh, Revelation is, in the end, God's going to give us a new name. A new name. And you know what? He already has. We're going to learn it. 
then. But once we come to Jesus, he makes us new. So let's start doing that. Let's start seeing ourselves as God sees us and start naming and, 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 and calling and, and accepting and declaring all those blessings that God has given us already in the Bible. So thank you. So pray. Glory to God. So we can stand up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because you love us so much. And your mercy and your love is new every day. Thank you because uh, you will never abandon us. You will never leave us, no matter what. You pay the highest price, and you're not going to cancel that, no matter what. Thank you because we can rest assured that in your love and in your security. And um, please remind us every day how much you love us. Remind us every day how you see us so that we may see each other through your eyes. So that we may, 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 may know what's your perfect will for us in our lives. Help us, God, to, to resist the devil, resist the temptation of, of, of uh, disconnecting from, from, from your purpose. Help us, Lord, to, to, to fight those thoughts that, that makes us feel smaller, weaker, unworthy. And um, not that we may raise ourselves up or, or raise our ego, but that we may see ourselves through your eyes. And that we may truly, truly believe what you say about us. Yes, and that we may accomplish your will, your perfect yes. will. That we may be a light in the darkness, we yes. may be salt here in, in, in earth for the time and that we may occupy until you arrive, until you return. Because we want to hear you say, come faithful servant. Help us, Lord. Renew your strength, renew your faith, renew your joy, and that people may see you through us. And that we may be a good testimony of you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.